In the pine forests of Mexico, spring is coming, and with it, a great migration is about to begin. Monarch butterflies have been in hibernation for the winter, but they are awakening to begin a 2,000 mile journey north for the summer. Some will fly to the Midwest of the United States, others to Canada, and some will travel to the Jersey Shore. The monarchs have made this journey north for a very specific reason. With the warming weather, it is time to breed and their offspring have very particular tastes. The milkweed plant, aptly named due to the milk-like sap it exudes when broken, is the only thing that the monarch caterpillars will eat. While once abundant in North America, milkweed is slowly disappearing. Due to new developments, pesticide use and changing global temperatures, milkweed is becoming harder and harder to find. Thankfully, the garden of Jim's parents is fit for royalty, with milkweed plants for young caterpillars, flowers with abundant pollen for the adults, and foliage for them to hide it in bad weather. But why did the caterpillar evolve to eat only milkweed? While it may seem like a poor survival strategy, milkweed harbors a secret. Toxic and bitter compounds called cardenolides. These compounds build up in the young caterpillars as they eat and grow, not only making them taste terrible, but potentially causing cardiac problems for any who dare to eat them. That is why both the adult butterflies and their caterpillars develop such bright colours to warn predators and protect themselves. With breeding season in full swing in sunny New Jersey, male and female butterflies begin their courtship. Male butterflies have distinctive spots on their lower wings, differentiating them from the females. The courtship dance of the monarch begins in the air, with the male and female circling each other. Eventually, they join together and can stay that way for up to 16 hours. Once they have mated, the female immediately begins searching for the perfect milkweed plant on which to lay her eggs. The eggs are tiny and attached to the milkweed leaf with a small amount of glue the female butterfly secretes as she lays. Three to five days after laying, a tiny caterpillar emerges. The newly hatched caterpillar eats its own egg before starting in on the milkweed. They grow quickly molting their skin every few days a total of five times. Tiny green faeces can be seen on the milkweed plants as the caterpillars eat and then poo and then eat some more and then poo some more and then do a little socialising with their caterpillar brethren before resuming their mission to eat as much milkweed as possible. Each caterpillar over its lifetime will consume the equivalent of an entire milkweed plant. After 14 days, the caterpillar is 10 times the length it was at hatch and is ready to begin the next stage of its amazing journey. The young caterpillar seeks the perfect spot and then hangs by the last two legs attaching themselves with a silk mat. Once they start hanging, they form a J and this is when the avid monarch observer knows a metamorphosis is about to begin. The caterpillar begins a dance to shed the final layer of skin, a process known as pupation. This dance continues until all that is left is a green chrysalis that hardens to form a protective shell. This happens over mere minutes and it's very easy to miss on camera. Unfortunately, not every caterpillar makes it to this stage, with disease and predators a constant threat to their survival. the assassin bug, an enemy of the monarch. While this bug can be a friend to farmers, killing unwanted insects that feast on plants, they are no friend to the monarch caterpillar. Assassin bugs are aptly named, hiding in the plants waiting to ambush their victims. They ensnare caterpillars and other insects with a sticky resin covering their legs before injecting them with a toxin that quite literally liquefies their insides. This caterpillar smoothie can then be sucked up through their mouth parts for an assassin's feast.
Knowing the trouble our royal friends were finding themselves in, we decided to intervene and try and raise our own monarch butterflies. We began by constructing our very own caterpillar castle. Using wood and leftover screening we found in the shed, we built an enclosure that could be moved indoors or outdoors depending on the weather. Once the cage was complete, we used our caterpillar tracking skills to find some babies to raise. At first, everything seemed to be going well, but soon after our caterpillars made their way to the top of the enclosure to begin their pupation, tragedy struck. Unfortunately, our little caterpillars hung from the ceiling like they're meant to, but then you can see that they've kind of like dehydrated and have this goo coming off them. And this is a sign that they either have a viral infection, that's called the NPV, NPV virus, or um, a Pseudomonas infection, which is a type of bacteria. So, bad news for our little caterpillars. We thought the reason they were dying in the garden was the assassin bugs, but it's possible that they were also suffering from either this bacteria or virus. So we're going to clean our little cage out and uh, start fresh with some new caterpillars and hopefully save them. I have to get two more uh, body scrubs. I've wrapped um, like a cotton ball of water on the bottom and then wrapped it up so hopefully that'll help keep this fresh so we don't have to replace it as frequently and disturb the little caterpillar. And I've rinsed it to try and get rid of any viral particles. That's beautiful. This time around we found caterpillars of a variety of sizes for our caterpillar castle. We had high hopes for a better outcome. Soon enough, one of the caterpillars formed the classic J-shape signifying a metamorphosis was about to begin, and finally, we had our first chrysalis. A new butterfly slowly develops in the chrysalis, and eventually it becomes clear with the wings and body becoming visible through the protective outer layer of the cocoon. So it's pretty early in the morning, but you can see that our little monarch friend is almost ready to emerge. A fellow monarch rearer once said that the very best way to ensure your monarch emerges from its cocoon is to go to the bathroom. After watching all day, we missed the emergence and didn't get it on film. Thankfully, the US Fish and Wildlife Services managed to capture this beautiful footage of a wild monarch breaking free. But finally, we had our first monarch butterfly, a beautiful young female, perfect in every way. She will live for around six weeks and may lay up to 400 eggs over her lifetime. And eventually, her great-grandchildren will begin the long journey back to Mexico to hibernate for the winter months. moment we have all been waiting for. We are about to release our monarch. Oh, he's flying it's around. Ready to go. Watch her sit there for 20 minutes now. I'm not... <laughs> There she goes. See her up there? It's in the tree. Seeing our majestic queen resting in the trees was exhilarating. Imagining her as a tiny pinhole sized egg growing into a fat yellow caterpillar before pupating and undergoing nature's most breathtaking transformation. But there was a bittersweet note to our happiness because monarchs are dying all over the Americas. Populations have declined by 80% over the last 20 years, and scientists believe their winter home in Mexico will be climatically unsuitable by the end of the century. Not only that, 
The milkweed populations, particularly in the corn and soy belt of the United States, have been decimated by pesticide use and industrialized agricultural development. While the solutions to global warming and the impending climate emergency are not so simple, there is something easy we can all do to help the monarchs. If you live somewhere on their migratory route, plant some milkweed and pollinating flowers in your yard. Reintroduce native plants to your neighbourhood so we can restore these kings and queens to their once great numbers. Let the monarch's journey be an inspiration to us all. How great change can be achieved, like the butterfly, our world is undergoing a transformation. It is up to us to make sure it is one that is as inspiring, exciting and beautiful as the metamorphosis of the monarchs.